Motion shows. What if I just sat here? Call the regular meeting in the Norm City Council for Tuesday, November 5th, 2019, 4.30 p.m. to order. First item on the agenda is your consent agenda items. What's your wishes? I'll offer a motion to approve those. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on any? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Item number 2.1, gambling permit for the Church of St. Mary's, and that's for February 7, 2020. I'll offer the motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number 3.1, comprehensive plan amendment for the park trail section. Dave Schnober, Community Development Director. <clears throat> this concerns a request uh, made by uh, Scott Dreckman on behalf of All Store Public Storage to um, actually, it's two different things that you're going to be considering at um, today's meeting. One is a change in the comprehensive plan, and the second item is the actual vacation of an existing easement area. So, we're going to talk about the comprehensive plan change that um, is under consideration. And <clears throat> this is to vacate a trail segment that um, is currently in place and extends from Carl Drive to in a kind of a northwesterly direction to uh, North Highland Avenue. And following a public hearing, the Planning Commission um, unanimously recommended approval of the request with one condition. And I should note that the Park and Recreation Commission also recommended um, that the same request um, be approved um, subject to the exchange uh, of this trail segment for a new trail segment. And that was done at their October 14th uh, meeting. At the present time, uh, this particular um, trail is located in, it's part of two different plats. The width of the uh, trail um, uh, varies from 20 feet to 10 feet. And um, <clears throat> the uh, one condition is that the owner um, agrees to provide a new trail segment of 20 feet that would extend from um, where the existing trail um, location is on Carl Drive uh, to the west to North uh, um, Highland Avenue. And if you look at um, your attachments, uh, you'll find an aerial photo that I think kind of depicts um, what is being proposed? Thank you, Thank you Dave. Any questions for Dave? I guess I feel it's been studied and agreed upon that everyone sees that it's a, you know, that it would be a good fit either way. So I guess I'm going to make a motion to approve, offer the resolution, and waive the reading approving the with conditions. Second. We have a motion and a second to offer the resolution. Waived reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmidt? Yes. Motion carries. <coughs> Item 4.1 a communication from MR Paving and Excavating requesting a project extension. Gaylor? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the uh, General contractor on the 2019 Utility Street and Alley project is requesting, uh, submitted a written request to extend the com substantial completion on the Front Street segment of the project uh, from this fall, the end of November, to July 3rd of next year. This is a six block segment of total reconstruct underground as well, infrastructure as well as roadway improvements. The contractor has made uh, nice progress in, in some deep excavation. And I agree with their um, with their request. Uh, we would, if a, the council approves it, we would communicate with the local property owners and hopefully address any concerns that they would have. We have a representative from the contracting firm available if you have any questions, or I could try and answer questions as well. Thank you. Can you talk about where they're at and what's what's left to do on that property? Or sure. That street? Sure, uh, Mr. President and members, uh, as of today. All the underground work has been completed and the grading and graveling of the six block segment should be completed. 
Uh, there's some final cleanup work that needs to be done um, uh, probably by the end of next week at the latest. We should have it all ready for, for winter weather. So the, th the thing that would remain is the concrete curb and gutter, the paving, the infill of the sidewalk areas, et cetera. We, we're planning on doing, I believe the contractor is going to do some temporary street lighting. That was one of the concerns we discussed right away because it's pretty dark down there. So we get that taken care of right away. And is that long of an extension normal? That just seems like it's quite a ways into next year. Um, well, Mr. President, with, uh, you know, spring weather, uh, you, you just never know. I think sure. that's, it's good to let it settle as long as we, we can. It's, this is not an uncommon practice. A lot of cities let things ride over winter. And when we do, um, normally do subdivisions, new underground subdivisions, we let them sit for at least four years and longer if we can. So it's not practical with finished roadways, but. I think it makes sense to do it in this case, and we'll end up with a better better Welcome product the in the end. So it's a gravel overlay for the winter? It'll just be a gravel section, yes. Okay. I'm going to authorize the proposal. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? And just one question for Mr. Kaler. All the affected residents down there have been notified, correct? Or that it's coming? We will notify them. The contractor will either notify them by email or by letter or both because some of them don't have email. Okay. And we may even hold a neighborhood meeting like we did to begin with. We'll see how it goes. But the feedback that I have gotten from individuals is they're, they're in favor of this. Did you have a question? I got a couple questions. Just step up to the mic. Name and address just for the record. Uh, Michael Hasse, 1229 South Front Street. Uh, you mentioned they're putting in temporary lighting. That was one of the main concerns. Mr. Hasse, um, the agreement with the contractors to put in some type of lighting, I suspect that it will be temporary. They'll probably put it up in those wooden poles. Right. And then they'll just have to string. It's a high voltage, so they'll have to string a different voltage. Okay. So, yes, we'll get some lighting done. And I take it they're going to have all our driveway approaches all fixed up so we can get in and out easy? There will be gravel approaches, but yeah, they will uh, feather them out and hopefully, when you use the word easy, I'm not sure what that means, but yeah, they'll be accessible. It's two feet lower now anyways. Yeah, I know. We'll, we'll get uh, it done. What about trash pickup? That going to be going up and down Front Street, or do we still got to go to corners and stuff for stuff? For no, it'll still be out in the, on the Front Street. And I, I don't know if mail will be changed or not. Matt, do you know? Matt uh, Mathowitz from... Mathowitz Construction can probably State address your name that. And address, just for the record. Yeah, Matt Mathowitz, MR Paving and Excavating, 2020 North Sp Spring Street. Um, we do plan to work with the city PUC department. We'll get temporary lighting up so that there's lighting down there. We've talked with Mr. Falcons down there already, so um, that'll be in plan in place. We wanted to make sure that we would get approval from the council, obviously, before we we talked with them. We will ramp your driveways. We'll. Uh, We'll level out that steep slope for you. We'll bring more aggregate in. That's our plan in the next two or three days. We wanted to get the road section opened, and then we'll try to mellow all the, those out so it's not s such a steep drop there for you guys. Um, garbage pickup would go down on Front Street, so you just got to get it out to the street right away like you would have in the past. And the mailboxes will be in a bank like they are now, but they'll be moved down to Front Street. Okay. Uh, you guys don't have all your heavy equipment moved off to, off the road by then? Yeah. For yep. snow plowing and everything, all that will be done? Yes. And snow plowing, you're going to use regular snow plows down there, or graders, or what? Mr. Hasse, it's, uh, I've discussed that with the street department. They're going to use a grader. The, as you know, the difference is a, right. a blade you can keep up and you're not right. digging up the gravel. That's what I was a wondering. truck you got to ride. So, yeah, we've got a grader program for that. Uh, then in the spring, what about water drainage? Are the drains set so the water can run off? Are you two that, feet yeah, higher? Or? Yeah, that'll be part of the contractor's maintenance responsibilities is to make sure the, the water drains. Okay. Right. So right now the drains are all in place. The castings will not be set on them, so there'll be clear rock on there, so the water should be able to drain through. But if you guys have any issues when you're there, we'll get you a phone number to call. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, any more concerns? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. 
Item 5.1, Ordinance Number 19-033, Fifth Series, Second Consideration. <coughs> Roger. Uh, Mr. President, Council Members, uh, this would be the second consideration of the new ordinance uh, imposing the graduated penalties, minimum penalties for blight violations um, and under the current charter, <coughs> it does not need to be read, but otherwise it would be ready for your consideration. Thank you. I'll offer a motion to waive that reading um, and implement this ordinance. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Do we want to talk about, Roger, you just want to talk about the penalties? I think that should well, basically, the idea is that um, to try and give a deterrent to repeat violations, that the minimum fine for the first violation uh, would be $100. If there is a second within a rolling 12-month period, it would be $300. And if there would be a third, it would be $500. And the timing <clears throat> of the occurrence would be whenever the violation is present, not if there would the date of the conviction, just so it's clear to property owners that um, they need to make sure that they don't reoffend within that 12 months. And this goes into effect 30 days from publication, Correct. is that right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Item 5.2, receive information on the residential use of industrial zoning districts. <laughs> Mr. Schnoberg. Okay, the City Council at your uh, September 17th uh, meeting um, requested that the Planning Commission um, um, provide you with some information on residential uses in industrial zoning districts. And you asked for that information back within 60 days. So um, staff, um, you know, provided the um, commission uh, with that information at their last meeting, which was on October 31st. Um, and at that time, uh, the commission approved a motion to forward this information to you for your consideration. And then they also added to advise you to proceed cautiously with any um, rezoning. Uh, what I would like to do is just briefly go through the um, uh, the information and the surveying that um, that we did um, the um, first um, uh, source of information was a survey of Minnesota communities um, we sent a 13 question um, survey to 26 communities in Minnesota this was done through survey monkey um, John nicely did this um, work um, and the survey was generally sent to greater Minnesota communities of similar size and character to New Malm. We also sent it to two metro area uh, suburbs um, primarily because metro area suburbs tend to be more on the leading edge of changing trends in um, zoning and so we we're interested in seeing uh, <coughs> if they maybe had um, some types of zoning classifications that we hadn't been exposed to um, yet. Of the 26 communities, we had uh, 21 that uh, completed the survey, so that's a response rate of, of 80%, which we were pleased with. Real quickly, of the 21 that responded, 80% or 17 Communities do not allow any residential units in their industrial districts. Of the 20% or four that uh, do allow residential uses, they are limited um, to um, certain specific kinds of situations. So it's not just the blanket, you can put a residential use here. There's conditions that are associated with that. Uh, for example, one community said you could only do it if it was associated with housing for a, an industry that was located in that um, um, location. So it, it was that type of um, um, authorization. Um, another uh, finding, 100% of the communities do not allow the construction of standalone single-family dwellings in their industrial districts, 100%. 
Um, another finding of the community surveyed, 90% or 19 of the communities do not allow the construction of a shows. Um, uh, we define the shows as being um, kind of a combined storage space, uh, workspace with living quarters. And then of the 10% or two communities that would, um, you know, the uh, specifications for that use are, um, are listed. Um, you know, in the, uh, the first question, um, there were um, four communities that um, allowed res our industrial uses, and you'll see the same answers for this particular question. So um, it just kind of uh, flowed down that way. Um, we um, asked for information about uh, on zoning districts in the community where they would allow the construction of a house, and there were a number of responses to that, and you can find those um, in the uh, tabulation that we provided. And then we asked um, how often communities um, had to deal with people living in um, storage buildings. And um, on a scale of one to 10, we had one community that said seven, we had another community that said three, and all of the rest said one. So I guess, um, you know, it hasn't been too much of a problem in other communities, but there are some locations. It'd be kind of interesting to follow up on that and see what uh, what they're dealing with. We conducted a second survey of uh, property owners um, within the area that uh, we had defined as being our subject area. And that area was bounded by 19th South, South Minnesota, 17th South, and South German streets. And then we also expanded the area by 175 feet um, to see what um, kind of response we would get from um, those property owners. And we sent out um, a total of 19 surveys and we got 11 back. And there's a table provided. And I'll maybe just focus on the responses within the subject area. <coughs> We had um, three responses that said that, um, you know, the use of um, um, residential in, uh, in with industrial would, uh, would be acceptable. We had two that said they saw a problem with it. And then we had one that said they didn't care, although they added a, a um, comment basically saying, I, I don't want anything to change from the way I'm currently able to use my property. <coughs> um, I should note that um, the responses um, that were, uh, that would be acceptable, that covered a majority of the property within that area. So then there were some uh, comments provided and those are in the uh, uh, report as well. I uh, should note that we also made a uh, phone call to New Alms Steel and Recycling because we didn't get a response back from them. And we thought it was important to find out what their thoughts were. And um, they indicated that they did not wish to take a position um, on the matter. Um, they indicated that they were not opposed to man caves, um, but would not want to see families um, residing in um, this that kind of area. Um, we also um, generated uh, some other information just based on comments that were either made at the Planning Commission meeting or that we've heard um, in discussions uh, by the uh, City Council. One had to do with the amount of uh, vacant um, industrial property that we have within the city. And you will find a table <coughs> um, in the report um, on that subject. Uh, just a couple of things that I found of interest. And when we talked about um, um, properties that qualified uh, in this manner, um, we are looking at um, new buildings being constructed on an empty lot. So it didn't include um, building additions like uh, it's currently taking place at Furmanich or out of craft. Um, so it's just, um, it's a new building structure. And we looked at the past five years, so that's um, 2014 to 2018. 
And during that time period, there were 25 building permits. And of those 25, 20 were for storage buildings. So I think we know what our growth industry is in New, in New Ulm. Um, the other thing we found is that um, we do have uh, the potential for a deficiency in our I-2 zoning district, uh, but we're probably um, three to five years out before that might become <coughs> an issue. But it's something to that we need to be uh, to be aware of. Another thing that um, there was, had been some discussion about was um, a concept called auto condos. Um, it's something that you see in the metropolitan area. And we found um, such type of facilities in Chanhassen and Medina. And we also found one in Columbus. Um, the facilities in Chanhassen and Medina did not allow residential use of the property. No one can stay overnight. Uh, in Columbus, they also, there's no residential uses at that location um, as well. Um, there also was some discussion about a possible pending Mankato Auto Sports Complex. <coughs> um, that particular um, use has now moved from Mankato to the um, Eagle Lake area. And we did talk to the um, mayor of Eagle Lake and asked him, you know, what they anticipated would be taking place. And um, he said they're currently having an environmental assessment worksheet done. And he said they're waiting for that to be completed before they get into the specifics of what they would allow. Now, Mankato staff told us that this was supposed to be a seasonal type of use. So it might be, um, available for overnight um, use from like the spring into the into the fall, but that at winter time it would, would not be occupied. Um, and then we also contacted the um, League of Minnesota Cities and there's kind of an email chain that we provided you with uh, that provides information um, as well. And that takes care of it. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody have any questions for Dave? It's a lot of information. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of information, but you know, it's how we want to act on it as right. a council. You know, so as a council, do we want to rezone that property, or do we just want to say it's end of subject and you know, and proceed? That's just. Based on your research, uh, Dave, what, what's your recommendation? Well, we have a zoning ordinance. Mm -hmm. We have a zoning map. We have a comprehensive plan. And I think we should follow those. Um, if um, we desire to, um, to change them, I th then I think that needs to be a, um, a fairly comprehensive look at the um, at the entire community, which is something that uh, has been talked about. Right. Okay, thank you. I don't think we can take any action on it tonight. It's just received a mm -hmm. study, and mm -hmm. I know if we want to set up something in a work session to talk about it because we need to do something more than this. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with putting it on the yep. end of the month's work session if that's available for November. And then uh, then we can give direction to staff and how we wish we want to proceed. You know, we have the information. There's a lot of data here. A lot you of know. data. Um, and then, I mean, I guess the biggest thing is we have to look at how we want our community to grow or, you know, mm -hmm. which direction and mm -hmm. what's going to be best suited for that area and other areas within our community so sure. so you're offering a motion to receive that into as well i'll offer a motion to receive the information <coughs> on residential uses on industrial zoning that districts was. second we have a motion and a second any more discussion seeing none all in favor say aye 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 opposed no motion carries <coughs> item 6.1 park and rec donations Okay, I've got it up. <laughs> you had to come up on my computer. <laughs> Hang on a second. It's not there yet. He likes it over yours. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not there yet either. 
Is 6 1 messing with this? Well. Three, Got it. I'm back in, I think. It's not, mine's not coming up. <laughs> I gotta reboot. Okay, here it is. I want to offer the resolution, weigh the reading, to accept the donations offered to the City of New Orleans Park and Rec Department as outlined. German Park Amphitheater, $200,000 matching pled from an anonymous donor, $1,000 cash honoring Dr. Ann Vogel from Joel Greenwald, $200 cash from Leo M. Gugesberg, $100 cash from Marianne Kuls, $100 cash from Margaret D. Oswald, and $50 cash from Kathy Kuls. Dog Park, $425 cash from Happy... T Happy Tails Dog Park Group, $84 cash from Happy Joe's Restaurant, and $110.86 from the Pizza Ranch Restaurant. So it's $2,069.86 cash, $200,000 matching pledge for a grand total of $202,069.86. I'll gladly second that. We have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Resolution. Resolution. Oh, resolution. Finance Director, please call the roll. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. And the mayor yeah, sending to take care of for the mayor. He, <clears throat> he'll be glad to put him, send him out when huh? he gets back to work. We have an acting mayor under the charter, Mr. President. No. <laughs> 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 Looks like Charlie said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting close to him. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll see to get out. Uh, I think they public knows that the mayor's got some health issues and I think he can do them when he gets back. Don't you think? They don't have to be out immediately. I don't know. Yeah. It's up to you. We'll figure something out. Yeah. All right. We'll go on to item 6.2, New Orleans Fire Department donations. I'll offer the resolution to waive the reading. Um, to accept the donations, $200 from Christensen's Farm. Christensen Farms and $179.23 from Pizza Ranch proceeds for Fire Prevention Week. Second. We have a motion and a second off the resolution. Waived reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none. Finance Director, please call the right. roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. <coughs> motion carries. <coughs> Item 6.3 Library donations and memorials. I'll offer the resolution to waive the reading, and they don't list them out separately. It just um, ha says that they received donations. So we'll accept those. Second. Oh. We have a motion and a second to offer the resolution. Waived reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, Finance Director, please call the roll. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 6.4 <coughs> League of Minnesota Cities and Trust. Insurance and trust liability coverage. Nicole? Uh, President and counselors, this is an annual request. It's uh, just a, a formality for the insurance renewal. Um, it's the option to, to not waive the limits on the tort liability. So it just limits it limits the coverage or limits what, what uh, claimant would be able to get. I'll offer the resolution waive the reading. Second. We got a motion and a second off the resolution waived reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none. Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Grant agreement with the Brown Lions and Redwood County Drug Task Force. Councilor and President, President and Councilors, as um, the fiscal agent for the Drug Task Force, um, it's just up to us to, to uh, accept the grant um, and authorize the, the chief to sign off on that grant. And I'll that's move this resolution. Thirty-five thousand. One hundred thirty-five thousand. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's actually a five thousand increase over what we've gotten over the last few years. Thank you. I'm um, offer this resolution as well. Second. We have a motion and a second to offer the resolution. Wait, reading. Any more discussion? <coughs> Seeing none. Finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher. Yes. Councilor Mack. Yes. Councilor Schultz. Yes. Councilor Christian. Yes. President Schmitz. Yes. Motion carries. Item six point six, ordinance number nineteen dash zero three four fifth series first. Consideration. President Councilors, there's very few changes to the fee schedule for the year. There was a few um, from community development, but nothing <coughs> nothing large or, or um, earth shattering. So Okay. 
so we don't need to read it, right? Correct. I'll offer the resolution to waive the reading accepting the 2020 fee schedule. I don't know if we even need to do anything. It's just it the just first says question. waive the reading the ordinance reading. Right. Okay. So we don't need to take any action. Oh, it's just the first consideration. Okay. So we just leave it. All right. We'll go on to let's see. Six point seven. Easement vacation for Scott Dirksman. That's the one that Dave was just talking about. Go ahead, Dave. Okay, this is the second part. So the easement area that we're um, vacating was for utility, drainage, public trail, and public way. And as I indicated before, that um, easement area varied in width from 20 feet to, um, to 10 feet. Um, located in uh, two different uh, plats. Uh, Mr. Um, Dreckman is requesting vacation of, vacation of the easement areas in order to extend his storage facilities towards North Highland Avenue. Um, we, um, whenever a request like this is made, we um, circulate um, this, that information to um, both uh, private utility um, uh, businesses as well as to um, PUC and city departments and none of them had any use for that particular easement area both current and in the future. Um, you know there were conditions that um, staff would recommend one being again the uh, new easement area being uh, provided of 20 feet in width from uh, on the north side of Carl Drive then um, there also was a payment of um, application fee, um, payment <coughs> of a recording fee. And then uh, we also wanted to be very um, clear that um, this vacation does not extend all the way to the streets, that we still maintain those existing easement areas that are on the street. So takes care of it. Thank you, Dave. Mr. President, yes. I can ask a question of Dave. Um, does the easement, is that reflected on the existing plants? Yes. Would they have to amend the plants? No. We've never done that in the past. Okay. All right. What we typically will do with the um, resolution that is um, approved by the council is we include a map showing the area that has been um, vacated. And that will get, get recorded. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. With that, I'll offer the resolution and waive the reading, approving with conditions the request of Scott Dreckman on behalf of All Store Public Storage to vacate the easement area west of North Garden Street and between Carl Drive and North Highland Avenue. Second. We have a motion and a second to offer the resolution. Waive the reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmidt? Yes. Motion carries. Item 6.8, hardship deferral for the 2020 installments due for the 2018 USA improvements. You gonna take that one, Nicole? Um, this request was received by someone who was affected by that, the assessments for that project. Um, they met all the qualifications necessary and the, the deferral has been explained to them at this point. Thank you. Any more discussion? Otherwise, entertain a resolution. It's four hundred and ninety-seven dollars and forty cents. If she meets the criteria, I'm going to go ahead and offer the resolution. Waive the reading. Second. Approving it. We have a motion and a second. To waive the reading. Resol offer the resolution. Waive the reading. Any more discussion? See none. Finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher. Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes, motion carries. Item 6.9, request from the Brown County to withhold market plot small. Chris? Yeah, so um, portions of the market plot small and George's ballroom have gone into tax forfeiture and part of that process 
uh, is to allow the city the option of asking them to withhold uh, those properties for up to six months to see if um, we can do some type of redevelopment project uh, with them. Um, currently on, on both properties, there potentially are some interested parties in developing um, those those parcels uh, we would like to work with them to see if they if there can be an agreement reached to facilitate some redevelopment of those properties um, there is no obligation on the city side to purchase those properties if the deal falls through um, any time during that six month and if three months in the deal doesn't really go anywhere we can turn it back over to the county we're not we don't have to hold it for the entire six months um, some of the conditions we'd like to um, <coughs> ask the county, um, again, one, city's not obligated to purchase the said properties. Two, uh, the city will be responsible for snow removal from the sidewalks. Uh, the city's obligation for snow re removal will constitute the extent of its obligation to pay maintenance costs, otherwise incurred uh, by the county during the six-month period. And then the third one will be the city will not be responsible for any liability uh, for personal injury or property damage uh, occurring on the property. Sounds good. Any questions? I know my concern obviously was number three. Would, so we don't have liability for <coughs> any injuries on the property, but we have to pay for the snow removal. Well, Mr. President, the, the statute says that um, the city has got the right to ask that it not be sold by the county right. at an auction for up to six months. So for that, that, doesn't, that doesn't mean that we're renting the property or we have the use of it. It just means that we would have the opportunity to try and put together something, find a buyer so it would be used productively. Um, the statute does say that if the city exercises that right, that the city is supposed to be responsible for maintaining, for the maintenance of the property during the time period. And <clears throat> this is something that the city has done in the past. Uh, we want to make sure it's understood the limit of that maintenance is going to be snow removal. <coughs> We're not fixing the inside of it or if there's issues that come up with that. But it's not going to be our responsibility. And because we basically only have an option to get it and are not going to be occupying it, there should be no basis for liability. Okay. Because we're not in control of it. I, I think if we can move that property along, it's been sitting there empty for a very long time. And, and if we can get somebody who's interested in developing that property, we all win on that. You know, the county wins, the city wins. So I, I certainly support it. I just thought it was odd that... Uh, we have to pay for the snow removal, but that'd be a small price to pay if we can get this area and project developed. So, but don't I we certainly will support do this, it. Don't we currently do the snow already for the sidewalk around the mall on German Street? Currently, because you know the mall doesn't own the sidewalk, isn't it? The city right away already currently. Correct. You know, I mean, I've seen the city doing it all the time. The this former owner never did the sidewalk. The city staff already did it, so. It, we're already doing the sidewalk. The only addition that we would have to do would be the sidewalk um, going up to the mall uh, in between the antique store and, and the street, Isn't that the small little area ramp. there. Is that, the still, is, that, is the middle section still owned by? That, that sidewalk is not part of the middle section. That's not part of the middle section. Okay. It's still privately owned. Right? So. Got it. So people that have an interest in developing this property would talk to you, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, so you'd be our contact person if there's actually, if there's a developer out there that's interested or more than one. So yep. let's hope something happens in six months. Okay. Any more discussion? Entertain a resolution? I'll offer that res resolution and waive the reading. Second. We have a motion and a second off the resolution. Waive the reading. Any more discussion? I guess my question is, is just what's our advantage? Is it our advantage, just, is it to, to kind of um, work with a known developer? Is that the advantage? Yep. Yes. And rather than other, just having otherwise, it. Otherwise, excuse me, if it, if it goes to an auction, anybody could buy it, and it might just be someone looking to flip it, and they're not really going to be serious about developing it. And the whole forfeiture process can take many oh, years. Yeah. If, yeah. if it happens again, it'll just sure. further deteriorate. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. But we're not looking at it for internal use of development no. for something of our use. Nope. Okay. Nope. Sounds good. 
Okay. Did we have a resident? Yeah, we did. Yep. Okay. <coughs> Finance Director, please call the roll. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Fisher? <laughs> yes. Councillor Christian? <laughs> yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Well, she carries. the order on me. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Item 7.1. Uh, accept a list of claims paid in the amount of $8,211,549.30 and approve a list of claims to be paid in the amount of $2,542,959.69. Okay. I'll offer the motion. Second. We have a motion. A second. Any discussion on any? See none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Oop. That's a resolution, yeah? No. No. Okay. No. Oh. Sorry. I'm looking at the last one. Motion carries. Uh, at this time, we'll adjourn and go into a closed session to discuss labor negotiation strategies. It's already after 6 o'clock. Oh, no, this is the first time this thing. Yeah.